Yeah. Good evening and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ozhammer. This is me, Brinley, the real Brin Shady, and my co-host Ryan. What's crackalackin' everybody? And we are joined tonight by the one and only number one Age of Sigma player in Australia, Luke Taylor himself. How's it going, buddy? Hey mate, how are you? Living the dream. Oh, yeah, 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 pretty good. Pretty pretty cruisy over in Brisbane. Where are you from, man? Uh from well to point. Oh pff, yeah. All over it. You're basically from Brisbane as well. Mate, all the good players are from Brisbane. What do you want to be? Yeah. All, all the good players are from Brisbane. All the good players are from Brisbane. So uh, what have you been up to this week, man? Uh, nothing. Nothing? Didn't happen to go to a tournament? I don't want to talk about it. You want to talk about it? I got my ass handed to me by a bunch of trees. A bunch of trees. <laughs> Shout Pretty out to bad. Aaron, though. Congratulations, Aaron. Well, Shouldn't well, be. well won, sir. For those of you who can't hear through the butt hurt, we went to a tournament on Sunday and Ryan did spectacularly against his uh, first opponent, a dwarf player, and then proceeded to get obliterated buy a bunch of trees, and then buy my dice, as usual. Oi, at that last game between you and me, it was like 12 points to 11 or something. Yeah, like, like one point. It was, but... it was literally down to three dice, so that's you. Yeah. Right <laughs> <on>. <laughs> that one point counts. That one point counts. Luke, what are you been up to, buddy? Um, not a lot. Work and painting a little bit. Had a couple of games. Yeah. Had a couple of games earlier in the week last week, um, but yeah, not too much really. Yeah, wicked. Mm. Yeah, wicked. <laughs> All right. Well, I've been I've been doing a fair bit of hobby leading up to the tournament. It's been pretty crazy. I'll uh, go to share screen and I'll show everyone what we've been doing because this is what people like. Apparently, they like seeing the clusterfuck that is my life. <laughs> Oh, wait, right, so we're doing Inception at the moment. Hold on, hold on. God damn it, Brendan. There we go, we got this. We got this. There I you go. To lock this thing. It's stuck to you, buddy. It's stuck to you. There we go. We're all good? Yeah. Yeah, we're all good. All right, so we could, all right, so this was this was my desk uh, Wednesday finishing up uh, some Stormcast. That was fairly exciting. And then it only proceeds to go downhill from here as I quickly realised that I only had a couple of days to actually um, get stuff done. I'll just quickly try and go through here. So here's me. I was just trying to build up my uh, warriors. I was uh, tearing them all apart and uh, using a good old bit of Loctite 403 to get some metal weapons on because I've always wanted to run Halberds, my Age of Sigma, my Chaos Army. I managed to get them. A fair few metal ones, so that was just them. Just getting prepared, and unfortunately, I had to deal with some Finecast crap. Everyone's ever dealt with Finecraft, uh, oh. Finecast. It was, that was horrific. There was so much flash on these things. <laughs> what is that? It looks like coral. That looks horrible. Yeah, it was, it was. It was disgusting. Like it was. I couldn't like. I've got another. I've got another like a couple of blisters that are with that. Luckily, um, are actually metal. Just the effort of finding some nice classic metal ones and um which was kind of rare but i got enough to uh be able to fill a field out a, a group of 20 which is really all i wanted so i'm running two groups one with halberds one with hand weapons they've uh done they, they kind of just did what they were supposed to do during the tournament which was just basically soak up a whole bunch of things and i also built this manticore there's like a lord that went on top of it uh my son chris and tim bob Bob the Manticore, oh, yeah. the fact that a three-year-old can pronounce really impressive. And here was my desk where I simply just gave up. I'm just like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> and I just walked away from it. So, That's disgusting. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. It, it had got to the point, like, even, even my light arch had fallen over on me. And I'm just like, I'm done. I'm out. I can't deal with this anymore. So that was that was a... That was an emotional time. All right, so myself and Ryan went to a tournament 
down at the Kalanga Lodge, Warrior Lodge, with the Warrior Lodge. He was everyone setting up. It was pretty exciting. Lots of tables, really cool lighting, lots of really cool armies. Um, a few guys on there, and we managed to have a fair bit of fun. So this was my first game. I was versing Jono Stormcast. So this had to be. This was my first proper game in a um, storm in a in an actual tournament, and I ended up beating him probably because I just ended up bum rushing him. Because that little that little blue dice that you can see that's actually the objective in the middle of the board. The person with the most models around the objective wins. So I'm too busy looking at the awesome player. terrain. Oh man, it, it it was some beautiful terrain. Like uh, this is MDF train all the all the little roofs lifted off and everything uh everything was actually a really cool sort of like spray paint job and all they use like some sort of oils on the wood it was i don't know i really liked it so basically what you see here this was my initial deployment uh chosen up the front just destroying stuff and my manticore bob the manticore just chilling on a house ready to jump down and wreck face and a relictor doing uh this next picture is especially important this was ryan complaining about this 13 year old you know using too many janky rules and we had to tell him to shut up and settle down uh, so. who's that fat dude standing up <laughs> no idea oh god, it's me. oh god i'm in shorts that i ended up ripping that day and Look at those thongs. And a pair of jandals. Ever the professional. Fuck Jandal, this is this is what we rock up to wearing. As you can see, over to the right is the lone 40k player waiting for his friends to rock up at the table. Which is they usually had a me. massive game of um Eldar versus uh Space Communist Fish there as well, but yeah. Space Communist Ow. Fish. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and then he, okay, so here's my Manticore wrecking face on a relictor and then my chaos just running amok as per usual. That's a great paint uh, job on the um on the manticore there. It's like all fifty shades of grey, is it? Mm. Yeah, it's um it's the it's a special stone stone edition. Um yeah. lots of I did a lot of grey wet blending on this. If you can <laughs> if, if you zoom if you zoom zoom in on it, you can uh you can go fuck off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh anyway, I've 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 got some photos of uh, the next game, I ended up getting absolutely pounded by these. I'm not really sure what they're called. There's like these ogres on giant ice. Mornfang. Mornfang. <laughs> yeah, I had yeah, the, the yeti lovers. Yeah, we'll probably they just skip through you. the next pictures. It was like it was like um, just, I think it, I think it was like turn three of round two. I turn around and he's like almost dead to all of these yeti lovers, and I'm like, oh, that reminds me, dude. Yeah. Don't let that dude charge you with anything. I'm like that would have been. And he just looks at me with hate in his eyes. He's like too fucking late. <laughs> but like the <clears throat> the end of the game, I only I ended up losing by one point. So I was pretty happy with that. That's pretty good. And then who was this? I can't remember who. Oh yeah, no, this was the Mournfangs. This was the third round Mournfangs versus the Slaveneth, Sylvaneth. What are they called? Classic, classic us ordering drive through on the way home because, oh my God, it's taking so long. Why does it take so long? It must be a high quality photo or something. No, no, it's because your um, laptop's straight out of 1967. Oh, no, it's a video. No, I don't want to see it. You're shocking. <laughs> anyway, this is, this is, uh, so those of you who were here last week, with us, uh, you might have remembered that we had we um, decided to hell, hold Michael to his word. He was painting a uh, Mangus, and he was like halfway through, and he wasn't sure if he was going to be able to do it. We we're just like, well, look, if you can finish it, we'll throw it up on the next channel. And we weren't, we didn't really have to hound him um, much to get it done. We've got a feeling Emma probably poked him a lot to finish it. She's taken these amazing pictures, and this is a finished product. So we uh, we've delivered. This is so just to quickly, um, Michael. I'm very proud of you, buddy. It's about time you actually painted something for a change. <laughs> yeah, apparently he's pretty sure. But, <laughs> but like overall, it's an amazing job. I'm loving the wings. Uh, 
do it justice. Apparently, it's a beautiful model. I'm really impressed. Oh, go away. Yeah, and I think um, I'm really glad that he's making space on his hobby bench for my free guild so he can do all of my... Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I heard him offering that he'd paint them all for free or something. I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I heard that too. Yeah, he's a nice. Yeah, it's pretty guy. good. So we, got, so we got a so we got the giant the giant rooster himself all painted up, looking beautiful. Uh probably be using his booty for guess that booty at some point. I'd say yes. Oh yeah, look at that ass. <laughs> look at that ass. Look at that ass. That's pretty. It's pretty good. Look at these wings. That's beautiful. I love the flames. Oh, I tell you That's what, right. after looking at that bum, oh, yeah, I'd like to do an inside job too. Inside job too. Oh, man. And there goes our PG rating. <laughs> we had a rating. Originally sent us, I'm just like, oh, that's nice, but I'm glad yeah. they sent us better ones too because I wasn't too impressed with that one. Was that Michael's, Michael's attempt at taking a photo before Emma took one? Yeah, it was pretty, pretty disastrous. Anyway, so that's my show and tell for the week. So I'll go back to not sharing. Oh yeah! Look at everyone's faces. There we go. How's that? Is that better? That's better. There we go. Back to it. All over it. Right. Yeah, we're um, good. So, just before we carry on um, with tonight, uh, to for those of you that aren't in Australia, you probably won't be aware of this, but on the western side of Australia at the moment, there's a really bad storm coming. Um, I've been speaking with Michael from Doom and Darkness. And um, he's actually out in the field at the moment uh, working. So uh, what happens is he's in the middle of nowhere with a tent set up in the bush um, to, uh, to work. But with the storm coming in, it's looking pretty dangerous. Um, uh, so he is trying. I think he might actually be watching now, but he's not sure how long his satellite will hold out for. Um, and he has asked that, uh, that we pray for him um, and his safety. Uh, so we're just going to take an opportunity now to uh, to pray for, for Michael from Doom and Darkness. So, gentlemen, if you could just uh, bow your heads for a moment. Our Saviour, who art in the celestial realm, Sigma be thy name. Thy vanguard wing come, thy storm cast one, in the mortal realms as it was at the last GT. Give us this day our daily <laughs> bat rap, and forgive us our snake eyes as we forgive those who roll well against us. Lead us not into Slanesh, but deliver us from Nurgle. For crowded is us here, with dwarves and free people, forever and ever, for Ulrich. <laughs> this is, this is why we never start on time, because of writing crazy shit. I hope you stay out there, Michael. Uh, as promised, there's a prayer for you, buddy. Be, be safe. Be safe. Um, Mostly because uh, Luke um, wants to see you at CanCon, so. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All over it, right? Next, uh, so we, uh, this week we ran a bit of a um, our usual Monday competition. We didn't go with miniatures. Uh, go with, um, tell us basically your story about your crappy dice rolls. Um, we're uh, excluding Ryan's stories from this because that would be his life story. Um, like every got, role ever. <laughs> every role ever. Um, but we've had some really cool submissions. There's been some really funny stories. Um, the, there was a couple, there was a Dungeons and Dragons one in here that somebody submitted and I'll try and find it, but there were a couple of other ones that went a bit crazy. Like we've got some funny photos. Like we've literally got people who've rolled fistfuls of dice and it's just come up ones, which has been, uh, it's been really, really, uh, it's good to see everyone trying to get in there. I'm just trying to find, I'm sure Luke's got a funny story about failing ones while I dig through the plethora of. Yeah. And, and, and just, just before we get Luke's um, failure, uh, Michael's actually said thanks. Uh, the inspiration um, and threats of being ridiculed this week uh, made sure it got painted. You're welcome. Yeah, good. You're welcome. That's what we're here for. Yeah. If we're not here for supporting, it's for emotionally damaging, abusing you. Yeah, pretty much. Um, yeah. Typical okay. level of <laughs> yeah. Luke, buddy, tell us your um. Tell us when the dice have betrayed you. Tell um, us a dice story. 
God, there's been so many times. <laughs> no, I think I think the I think the most annoying ones are definitely like when you like really need a priority, and your opponent rolls like a two, and then you roll a one. It's like, oh. yeah, that's like my every priority roll ever. Mm. They're they're definitely the worst ones. I think. I think uh, my last game I had against Tim uh, in the city store. I didn't win a single priority, and he was literally like rolling twos, and I was rolling ones for every priority. I think that's probably, yeah, that's the most recent time of the dice have not loved me very much. I guess as a Skaven player as well, though, you get used to um, to the bad rolls because that's just part of playing Skaven as well. Yeah, blowing yourself up is pretty fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. It doesn't happen as much as it used to. Like in the old editions, it was way more terrifying. Yeah. I'd say yeah, what, nothing is. Now. <laughs> the, the, the dice betrayed me on the weekend when um, 30 of my liberators got surrounded by three of those stupid fucking woods from the tree people. Uh-huh. And then I got. And then, and then the only gap that they could go through was blocked by a tree lord ancient and like three dryads or something. And um, I, got, I got double turn. And yeah. Like it didn't even it doesn't even matter that they had um that they had good bravery <laughs> because I lost that many that when I went to do battle shock I was just like, Oh well, at least I've got some judicators over here. <laughs> yeah. got, some, got some stuff going on. I remember when I was playing against um a mate in a tournament, he had orcs and I had Tau. He had done he had done really well, um he basically managed to come up and just start cleaning me off one side of the board to the other. But um, he he charged uh, my commander. This was just a crisis suit commander, so it was nothing special. I think he had a, a plasma gun or something with a group of like 30, 35 boys. A period of like two turns the between like the boys, like eventually they ran away but between them just punching on with the the commander, they just like he just slaughtered his way through thirty boys to the point where he made them like he killed a fair amount of them, made them run, and then proceeded to engage the um the war boss in close combat, and then proceeded to beat an orc war boss as a tower commander. <laughs> just <laughs> just punching on. And like my god, but he was like every time he needed to roll like hits, it was just buckets of ones. I'm like, dude, just just change your dice, man. Just change your dice. Like you don't need to keep doing this to yourself. He's like, no, man, no, I'm gonna do it. I can do it. And he, he just couldn't. And it was like a little train that couldn't, and it was heartbreaking. And <laughs> and then did somebody pop up and go, nobody cares because it's not AOS. Oh whatever. <laughs> Wait, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to keep the 40k. You know. 40k watches happy otherwise like there's riots and people get cranky and there's no way i'm letting you go for an entire show about age of sigma like no, you're right heaven forbid you piss off all nine people playing eighth edition <laughs> wait, there's so many pe- hey it's more people that are playing ninth <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry is it too it's soon so good no it's not too soon too soon <laughs> Not choose. I like it. Uh, we love we love ninth edition, really. We do. do. Okay. Um. So, have you got those stories up from those from from the guys on Facebook? Guys and girls on Facebook. Yeah, one of them is really long. I'm actually gonna. Okay, so I'm gonna give a shout out quickly to D Dubs. He's actually had like basically a probability breakdown of how shit his list is and how terrifying the scenario was. Slash demons like no, I'm not not even kidding. Like this is this fellow. Yeah, submitted, I read it. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, they submitted it from where are we? Where are we at? I think it's on our actual page. So it's not from one of the groups we posted to. And like it is, it is truly impressive. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna repost it because it's just that massive. But basically, it was a fight against Slanesh demons and Tyranids in six. Um. Uh, basically, uh, he ended up losing. By turn five, um, and just getting absolutely smeared, like, and the the cumulative probability of um, 
him winning was seven billion to one. So seven billion to one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I'm sure it's not exaggerated, but that seems about <laughs> right. So, um, shout out to you, D Dubs. That was that. That is an impressive list. Um, it's gonna. We're gonna repost it. That's epic. Um, I'm gonna find. Okay, so I remember. So the. I'm gonna have to find where the um person put the Dungeons and Dragons one, but basically he had there was a gnome bard, and it was trying to like, um, convince like this, uh, wolf to come out of this, <laughs> to come out of a, like to um come out of a forest or something. One to try and convince the wolf, <laughs> and basically results in him insulting the wolf's mother and the wolf jumping out and ripping him apart. So. <laughs> I love Dungeons and Dragons. It just gets so vicious. So vicious. And then uh, shout out to Mikey Edwards, who, like, if you've ever played against him, you'll know it. He's the only person who'd roll, like, all ones. So he's a good friend of ours, likes to play at IF. So if you want an easy game, go down to Irresistible Force and so challenge him. You just want to take off an easy win, yeah. <laughs> take, off, take off an easy win. <laughs> Just go down there and ask him to roll some dice. But except for in a tournament, he seems to do really well in tournaments. Look, there's like, there, there's nothing there's nothing better than meeting people in the hobby that can hang shit on themselves and save you the hassle. Because it shows it just yeah. shows good I, I think it's good sport and good character. He's pretty good. He's a good he's a good so, bloke to play against. Just, so uh, thanks, thanks to everybody who um Thanks to everybody who who sent us in some of your stuff too. I I've, I've actually had a lot of fun reading them. Actually, still reading some now as Brindley talks. They're, some of them are pretty funny. Man, they're they're really good. I wish we had more time <laughs> to go over them. They're just they're <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> but we it's don't have the luxury of time. Makes me, feel, <laughs> makes me huh? feel like I'm not the only one. Nah, there are some classics out there. I like <laughs> the people who submitted them have been really good. I think we got like 7,000 views by the end of it for that. So uh, we're up to, yeah, almost 70, uh, just over 7,200 people. <laughs> yeah. So, um, there's really it, there's a bit. <laughs> yeah. And, and then there's that's, all of the stuff on Twitter as well, which, uh, yeah. That's pretty exciting. Going to make use of that Twitter. We're going to work out how to use the twist for you. Yeah. These people even, on. We're up to like 3,000 followers or something. So. Yeah, I don't even know where from. We'll suss it out. Yeah, we'll work it out. Anyway, so the next section is, um, do you want to do the news or do you want to do, oh, we'll do the news so you can go get your drink and then we'll. Yeah, you guys, you guys just have to excuse me. I, I do need to, to depart for a moment when Brindley does his news. It's mostly 40K shit anyway. So. Yeah. yeah, whatever. Get out of here. <laughs> go on. All right, so we're going to cover local events first. This is just like a quick... Shout out to all the stuff I've excluded, Games Workshop stores, because let's be honest, they get enough publicity as it is. This is about the uh, local tournaments, just what's cracking. Uh, everything's starting to wind down, coming to Christmas. We're getting a lot of, uh, of uh, event organizers. Obviously, people are going away on holidays. People want to spend time with their family. They want to do things. They want to um, get out and do their own stuff. So uh, here at the Warrior Lodge, um, 18th of November, they've got a time of war. It's a 40K tournament. The 26th of November. 40k 8th edition, another one. Northern Knights, Fortunes of War. That's going to be a bold action game. I don't play bold action, but if you like it, go there. Uh, Legion of War Game is another local group. Uh, 18th of November, they're teaming up with the Bray Park Alliance, and that's in time for the Time of War 40k tournament. Should be fairly exciting. Uh, nothing announced from the Gamers Guild. Ace Comic and Games, okay, 20th of, 25th of November. Uh, this year, 40k play day as per usual. Pub Hammer on the 9th of December, they've got the 17th Open War Horus Heresy um, event, which is usually really exciting. They put on a great thing. Pub Hammer's a great group. Uh, they usually run an event every fortnight. Um, definitely go check them out if you're down south side. Great group of lads. Really enjoy playing with them. Redland City War Gamers. Would this, would this happen to be some of your lot? Yeah, that'd be Evan. I imagine running this one. Yeah, man. You got anything coming up for us? Uh, Evan is running, um, he doesn't have a set date yet, but he does know it's before Christmas. It's going to be called Gentleman Hammer. Okay, um, cool. So, like, the awards are, like, best presented, best gamesman, and then best dressed. So, like, oh, people are encouraged to, to dress up. Um, 
he hasn't released a, an actual date or a, a full pack for it yet, but it should be fun when it comes out. Um, and then there's also an event um, being run by uh, up at Battle Station Toowoomba this Sunday called Unlikely Brotherhood. It's Oh, yeah, doubles event. It's, yeah, it's random doubles, yeah, so 1,000 points. That'll be fun. I'm going to go up to that one. So. Oh, hell yeah. That's going to be awesome. That's going to be really cool. Well, that's convenient because that was like the next one in line for the events that I was talking about. All right, so Irresistible Force, 19th of November. they got Death of Hades, 40K doubles event. So they're also going to be running an unknown doubles tournament where I don't think people know who people are going with. Um, great group of lads, good event, great tables, heaps of terrain, good location. Always worth playing there. Should be really fun if you guys need any information. Hit up Mikey Edwards or just hell. Go have a look at the Irresistible Force link. It's in the link below. We throw it in there with everything else we're talking about today. Uh, Warhammer Age of Sigma Sydney group. Okay, it's the 19th of November. They are running an Age of Sigma event at the Games Cube. And then again on the 17th of December, another Age of Sigma event. Uh, so they're both both tournaments. 3D6 um, down at uh, down in the ACT, 9th of December, Pace to 30k Horus Heresy event. Uh, so that's um, basically you get a whole bunch of knights, like the Imperial Knight Titans, and they're just smashing it out. It's a really cool event. If you guys are into that, go check it out. Um, Arc 40k. Arc 40k has got an event on the 17th to the 18th of Feb. It's a really big tournament. We'll be plugging that more later. Not too much point going into right now. It's ages away. Outpost out. So we're going to go up north. Up north a bit more. Outpost six zero three zero in Western Australia, eleventh of November. Um, they've got the Harris Heresy Plunder of Dolgar. Um, that's just happened. As has the twelfth of November. I've included these because these were really cool events. They had some really cool prizes. Absolutely uh, love their stuff. It's going to be insane. Uh, and then last of all, we've got Objective Secured, our good friends over in South Perth. They've got the Western Australian 40K Masters Tournament 2017 on the 18th of November. It's going to be really exciting. It's going to be a big event. Lots of people are going to be there. I think they've got 50 people already and they're still a week out. It's going to be a huge event. As you said, it's the Masters. Um, they run some of the biggest tournaments around. Great group of people, Michael and Emma. Shout out to them. If you're watching, I think they are. No, they are watching. Special shout out to Emma because we know you're the you're the one who really gets everything done. Michael just paints his paints his miniatures and makes you build all the train. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll leave you with that. And that's all the events that are happening around Australia that we know of. If you know of any more, definitely hit us up. Get in contact with us. Come check us out. There's a whole bunch of groups. We want to hear from you. We want to know what's going on around Australia. The more people that tell us what's going on the less work I have to do on uh, Sunday night trying to find these things. So, yeah, come hit us up. Uh, all right, so uh, into the... Before you carry on, Wednesday just said that um, there are pre-made pairings for the doubles um, at oh, Irresistible we... Force, but if people don't have a partner, um, they'll help find one as well. So spot on. Yeah. yeah, wicked, so they're all over that. As per usual, the lads at Irresistible Force. It's going to be a cool tournament. I'm looking forward. A special mention out to Red Rock Deli, Sweet and Shower Cream. If you want to bribe Ryan, just stick some chips in his face. He's a, uh, yeah, he's good to go. He's all over that shit. Um, yeah, so into the news. Um, it's been a kind of quiet week. Luke, do you want to tell us about what's been happening in the world of Age of Sigma? Um. As far as like new releases and stuff goes, or yeah, 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 I I don't think there's actually been much. I'm just on the Games Workshop site now. There's a bunch of Shades by stuff and some reboxes of um, terrain. Like the Citadel of the Ever Chosen. It's it, yeah. they're like expensive kits, but you get like a full fortress, which is pretty cool. They're pretty massive. Um, yeah, I'm a... all the new Shades by Dice. They look really nice. Some of the cut, some of the new Shades by Dice. I like the Death ones. They're looking really good. Uh, so they've got uh, they've got two new warbands that came out really recently. Yeah, pretty recently, like the the Spectral Guard and the um, Iron Skull Boys. Yeah, they're looking pretty good. I'm I'm look I'm liking the look of them. Yeah, I like the death. I like the death rattle guys. They look really cool. Apparently, the orcs are absolutely brutal. 
in uh the thing uh uh games workshop ran their first shade spa tournament blood and glory um yeah big event someone who won it somebody won it cool they won in the uk yeah the one who won blood and glory uh, i'm not sure on who won the blood and glory one in the uk okay I don't know. It's really no. congratulations to whoever won. Good on you. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's been pretty quiet for Age of Sigma. I think everything's been really focused on 40k. Um, yeah, it's the end of the tournament season, really. Masters is in a few weeks, and and then everything will kick off again at CanCon in January. It's it's definitely it's definitely starting to wind down a fair bit of it for Age of Sigma anyway. Which is, you know, it's not such a bad thing. Like it's, it's still Liam pretty... from Clan Filth mentioned that it was a um, a play tester who won that comp uh, was Skelly's. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. wicked! Yeah. That's pretty cool. So I don't know if play tester means like they had an extra advantage or something, but I mean, like if you won a competition, it's still a game of dice. That's still pretty. Yeah, still pretty impressive. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, we're myself and Ryan are yet to um, play it out, play it ourselves. It's looking pretty good. Um, I'm I'm real keen to give the the corn uh, reavers a go. See how they go. Yeah, I'm really that? keen to finish my death army off before I do that. Yeah, yeah, you got you got a lot of gluing to go. <sighs> it's so much to do. Uh, yeah, it hasn't been too much for. Age of Sigma, 40k, it's been exploding as per usual. We've got um, the world still reeling. I mean, okay, not really reeling, but everyone's, like, getting all into the new Tyranid Codex, checking out some of the new um, the new synergies that are now, now available to a lot of people. I mean, there's been a fair few changes. Not a lot of, like, really, 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 like, crazy huge ones like we saw in the Imperial Guard Codex where you've got tanks shooting twice and stuff having plus one to strength as infantry and all this other crap but there's still like definitely a couple of really interesting um additions that have been made to the codex um like uh, those big brains and thought things are now like absolutely insane when it comes to like psychic powers um they've the the um the can effects are cheaper so that's a really big thing uh old one eye He's gone from eight wounds to nine, which is actually an advantage because now you can't target him because he's not like a 10 wound creature. Mm. So, but he's still got all these really cool buffs and stuff. So that's a pretty big, pretty big thing. I've been trying to follow it a little bit. I don't really play Tyranids, but there's some really cool stuff out there. And there's been a couple of really cool. Um, so with, with like the rest of the 40 K armies that have been coming out, some of the, um, some of the uh, like the splinter groups that you can get available in it. So like Imperial Guard, you've got your regiments. Space Marines, you've got your chapters. With Tyranids, you've got your your high fleets. Okay. And so one of the high fleets, like you get a bonus for having more troops. So you get um, you're able to reroll uh, failed to hits if you outnumber your opponent. That's one of the rules. And there's like a couple of other ones that are really really well themed. And I, I, I like it how they're starting to bring the fluff back into uh, what's been happening with the armies. It's not super competitive. Like, we see, see a lot of the same stuff, like need one to hit, plus one to hit. You know, you can move twice, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But they're making it more themed now, which is really exciting. So I'm really enjoying it. But that's not the thing that I've been, like, absolutely getting beyond excited for. Necromunda has finally... Um, come out like it came out last week but i've actually had a chance to actually have a look at it really really cool i used to play the old game it's a bit of a different game it's a much much more different game now um i mean we've got more miniatures and i was really really hesitant when i saw like the whole the hex tiles that they sort of had out i'm just like oh no it's gonna be like shade spire it's gonna be shit but it's not it's free movement um it's actually gonna be really really exciting a lot of the a lot of the uh resources that have been poured into it really big we've got two Gangs have been redone, Goliath and Escher. I'm a big Goliath fan because, like, Mohawks are just, like, win for the days. Absolutely love it. Um, some really cool new terrain pieces that have come out. Um, I'm, oh, man, I am really, really looking forward to it. 
uh, it's going to be a big, big thing. I'm just quickly searching because my mate sent me that there's, because they've got a free PDF available um, that allows you to adapt it to basically normal board play to the Necromunda that we're used to, which is where it's at. Um, still, the box set is a really, really good. Um, it's a really good value for money. I think it's only one fifty, which is really exciting. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be heading down to Irresistible Force to grab mine because they they just do they're just a cool bunch of guys. It's a good good place to buy through. Definitely enjoy uh, going there. But there's some new terrain that's been released. The units have their own dice. You can buy the units separately. That's another massive thing, which is really cool. So if you want to buy extra, um, if you want to buy extra stuff, um, you can. You can buy extra gang members. They've got their own cards. You can even buy specialist bases for Necromunda, which is exciting. So there's a lot, lot more support that's being thrown behind this edition of Necromunda than um, was put through originally. And those of you who played. The original game you'll still find a lot of elements that are really really enjoyable and a lot of stuff that you really love there's a couple of youtube videos about how to play the quick game to pick up it's really fun um they've kind of taken what they have learned from um the shadow war armageddon and then they've applied it a lot better to necromunda um yeah so uh there's an expansion book which is uh, the proper old school campaign. That's that is where it's at. That's where all the awesome old school Necromunda shit is living. Um, so definitely check out the expansion pack. I'm pretty sure it comes in the box set. I'm not really sure. Um, and there's also and it also includes like the 3D trains. So you're not just playing on a flat set with bulkheads and all this other stuff. Um, yeah, box sets good value. I think I mentioned that. Some really really cool stuff. Um, just ah. Uh, there, yeah, there's just some absolutely amazing stuff. So you've got urban, uh, so you've got gang war, which is the expansion. Like, ah, uh, man, there's gonna be some really cool stuff out there. Um, what else have we got for 40k? Yep, Tyranids. Uh, you've got their data cards, codexes, star collecting box. They're all out. They're all going crazy. Obviously, I mean, we still got some cool stuff from the elder floating around. Um, some really really janky stuff going on with still but um overall it's been pretty been pretty good for 40k it's been keep definitely been keeping us really busy i'm uh i'm really really uh excited to see um what's going to be happening whether or not they bring competitive play out for necromunda um is another thing i'm not really too fussed if they do if they don't if they don't um I'm not too, super worried. Could be, could be better, could be worse. Um, yeah, that's 40k. That's 40k news. I think I have uh, hit everything up. Uh, Machine says Necromunda modules are huge. I agree, they're massive. Um, oh, and apparently there are two two new warbands for Shadespire first quarter. He's hoping that it's going to be Slaves to Darkness. Um, I know we've already got one chaos one, but uh, excited people can get excited hopes. So, fuck you all. Um, <laughs> I can't thing. wait. I have I mean, chips stuck in like all of my teeth now. Mate, I've got to do something while I wait for the Tau Codex to drop, which may or may not ever happen. So, as if you need a fucking Codex, dude. It's not hard. Paint fifty fire warriors. Paint fifty fire warriors. Put fifty fire warriors on the table. Piss off your opponent. Stop telling um, everyone my tactic. Dude, you just, you like, just, mate, I tell you my up. tactic in confidence, and you just, you just, you just throw me under the bus here. Uh, if, foul, if I want to take fifty fire warriors, I am so entitled to do that. <laughs> you got them too. I, I do. Um, I have a lot of I, it, that, warriors. Is that all of the news? Because I have one thing to add. Yeah, man, throw it in. That, right, that was cool. it. Um, so it's not uh, it's it's not hobby related. Oh, but okay. It does relate to a lot of uh, the people that are in our community and hobby. So um, this month is uh, November. So in Australia, we have a thing called Movember, um, which is uh, basically men are facing a health crisis. Um, it's not being talked about. Um, 
a lot of our mates in that are dying uh, too young. Um, and uh, this organisation have got together and started in November to try and help. So basically, um, doing Movember means raising funds for men's health. Um, uh, it's mostly for like uh, prostate cancer and testicular cancer, but also for mental health and suicide prevention. And um, basically what you do in Movember is you start clean shaven and uh, you grow throughout the month uh, and try to raise money for the cause. So anybody out there that's listening, um, if you do anything tonight, uh, let it just be the Chuck Movember into um, into Google uh, or go to au.movember.com, sign up or, um, or donate because uh, it's something that's pretty close to our heart and uh, it would be awesome for, um, for everybody to just, uh, you know, for the cost of one chaos marauder, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> donate, donate to, uh, to help, help out our mates um, and our friends in the community as well that might be suffering from um, mental health uh, or any other sickness for that matter as well. So, yeah, yeah it's, a big, Movember. it's a big issue that we don't talk about. It's pretty, it's pretty important. Um, as Ryan said, there's not much to donate. As you can see, I've started growing mine. Yeah, all six hairs. All six hairs. I'm a, I am basically, I have the facial hair capacity of a prepubescent girl. So. You have the facial hair capacity of a gooch, is what you have. Of a gooch. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a good effort. Um, throw your money and get involved. We've got a link on our, we've got a link on Ozhammer. There's a big, there's a ogre with a big dirty mustache on there. Check it out. Um, it's important. A lot of people don't realise it. Anyway, that's our segment. We're going to throw straight into Guess That Booty. We have oh, playing today. Shit. Oh, yeah. We've got Luke Taylor, number one Age of Sigma player in Australia, who's going to try and guess a whole bunch of butts of so miniatures, of course. Before, right. before we get into this, Luke, just so you're aware, um, the last time, <laughs> for everybody watching, the last time Luke was on the show, uh, there was a whole group of us and we were um, judging um, a list off between uh, Paul Conti and Tom from Warhammer Weekly. We had a, we had a guest at Booty and um, Liam from Clan Filth uh, down in the uh, butthole area of uh, Australia um, <laughs> actually guessed the most. So um, considering that uh, your position within... Age of Sigma, um, if it was a ladder, I would hope that um, that you could guess these as fast or better than Liam. We're not expecting right? it. Are you up for it? I'm up for it. I'm up All right. For it. Okay, give Scoops me one second crayon. when I, I share this screen then. I've got my, I've got the Ozhammer crayon ready to go. It's orange because it doesn't taste the greatest, so that's why the, it's the only one I've got left. All right. So we have, um, this is the first one of 10. That's Adjudicator. Whoa. Look at this guy. Is it though? Is it? Is it? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's one crayon. Just one? Just one. Yeah, it's just one. It's one. You got one okay. crayon. <laughs> All right, okay. Here we go then. Number two. Guess that booty. Oh, the nice looking male butt. Is that is that a chaos warrior? Oh, oh. it's no. it's a wraith monger. Yeah, yeah. Damn. I'm I don't sorry, know. can't give you that one, buddy. Yeah, that no. wasn't really cool enough. Can't give you that one. No. All right. Uh, number three. Guess that booty. <laughs> oh, that's a vermin lord. A vermin lord, what? They all have the same booty. Yeah, they got the same booty. That's all right. Just have a guess. Uh, is that the uh, corruptor? Yes. Yeah. Oh wow! You can tell that from a butt. That's two crowns. Two out of three. Oh, the color scheme. The color scheme. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, guess that booty number four. Oh, that's one of the maggoth lords. I'm not sure which one. Uh, I'm not sure which Maggoth Lord. It's just it's one of the Maggoth Lords. I don't know which dude, though. I don't even know their names. 
This is Ogoth Demon Spew. Yep. So we'll okay. give you half a point for that because you are at least identified it's one of the Magath Lords. Yep. Okay. <laughs> right. Number five, guess that booty. That's Nagash. No, 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 hold on. That's a. That's either an Archai or a Harbinger. I'm going to go with an Archai. It's a Morgast Harbinger. Damn it. <laughs> was that was that three out of three out of five so far? Three out of six. Um, we're at one, two, uh, two and a half. Yeah, we're at two and a half, and we're up two, to number two. six now. We're just about to hit number six. Here we go, oh, number six. Right, two and a half out of six. Booty. That's a great unclean one. The worst model ever. Yes, it is. <laughs> right, been pretty good. I would have also accepted piece of shit spewed up plastic. Painted by a hippie. See, I, I used to like that model, but with the other head, the weird old school head. Oh, uh, dude, you know what? It's once you go Forge World with the Great Unclean one, you never go back. Yeah, I converted mine up from a Mega Lord instead. Yeah, it's pretty cool. cool too. Mm. All right, number seven. Guess that booty. That is a Savage Orc. Oh, God. <laughs> That's a well-defined butt. <laughs> I know. It's a good ass. Why are you wearing any clothes? That poor wolf. It's like a sex crime. Is that just a savage old ball boy? Uh, shout out, by the way, to Messane1 uh, from from Robsec, which is – oh, no, it's Mike. doesn't matter. We already know you <laughs> there, Mike. Don't be, don't be confusing me with the crazy, crazy names. All right. Um, that is a savage ball boy uh, maniac. Uh, is that count? You're going to be on so many of these things where they have the same butts but just different weapons. So many. Can we, this I'll is have to know that no, no two three. butts are the same. <laughs> is he at four and a half? He's at four and a half out of seven. Friendly, you've got one job and it's to count crayons. There's a maximum <laughs> of ten crayons. I'm not going to help you with crayon counting. That's your job. This right. is what you do. All right. We're up to number seven. Uh, number eight, sorry. Guess that booty. Um, uh, some kind of elf, I think. I actually don't know who that is. The Kairic Acolyte or Kairic oh Acolyte, God. whatever you say. Wow, wow. miles off. Yeah. Oh, miles like, off that one. Like negative a point. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's bad. I've got those in my army, and I couldn't even see that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking closer for the butt. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, you know. So I can, I can, we can, we can go right, like that's an upskirt shot right there as well. <laughs> yeah, that's some handed photography that's going on there. He's very, it's very Greek, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I really, I um, like that. They're great models. I'm thinking of getting some Zinch units for my Chaos Army. Nice. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a thing to do. They just seem like they're the most shit human beings, and you should play Stormcast. But whatever. No, nah, Zinch are way nicer than Stormcast. Number nine, seven. number nine. Here we go. Guess that booty. That's a Yeti. Yeah, yeah, it's got I'll it. Give, I'll give you that one. Yeah, it's an Icefall Yeti. <laughs> yeti, it's got a Yeti in it. Yeah. All right. right, last one. This You've is number that. ten. Number it's ten. You're sitting at four and a half. You got to hit over fifty percent, mate. Come on. Yeah, this is Here bad. Guess that's that is a, that is a pink horror. Oh. No, actually, that is a herald. Nah, said pink horror first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is your final answer? It's a herald of Zinch. On disc, yes, it is. Give him the crayon. Give him the crayon. Oh. All right, so out of ten, you've got a total of four and a half. That's bad. Crayon. Yeah. So That's bad. Pretty pretty good. I, I don't got know five and a half. I counted five and a half. No, nah, it's definitely He got the Judicator, he got the Vermin Lord, he got the Great Unclean one, he got the Yeti, and he got the Herald, and he got half a point for um, or what's Demon Spear? Oi, you're not counting. I am. It's four That's and a half. Five and a half. <laughs> four and a half. Luke, buddy. Four and a half. Look, 
you got five and a half, and next week Brinley can do the finding of the booty, and I'll do the counting because I feel like it might be safer. And I'm now actually worried that Brinley's going to hurt himself if I ask him to do anything wrong. <laughs> At least no, he's spelled, at least he can spell really, properly. Don't go giving crayons out willy nilly. It's four and a half, or we're going to destroy the economy. <laughs> you're, you're a monster, Ryan. This is this is why your wife doesn't let you have money. <laughs> 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 I have no rebuttal. Shut up. Move on. <laughs> All right. So that's, that's guess you booty. So that brings us to our fantastic segment of. Ryan's going to be taking us away with it. So, Ryan, over to you, buddy. All right. So, um, the the topic of tonight is uh, is creating a competitive army. So that's right from where to go. Uh, you've played a little bit for a while. You've uh, dabbled with a few getting started kits. Or like Brinley, you just steal other people's stuff and play on my table using bowls and cups for terrain because <laughs> we were desperate good. for a game. But, um, you, you, and now you want to go uh, to a tournament. Well, you've played a couple of tournaments in your local painting group and you want to do something a little bit more serious. Or, like me, you're just sick of getting your ass kicked and want to build something that's a little bit better on the table so that you can, because it is, I know everyone's like, oh, it doesn't matter if you win and lose. Everyone just likes throwing dice and right. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> there is fun to be had in winning a game. Everybody deserves a win. Right? Yep. Everybody, everybody in hobby deserves a win. Um, I deserve a win. Luke deserves a win. Brindley can go fuck himself. Everybody <laughs> deserves a win. So, you know, what we yeah, wanted to like be. <laughs> Dude, with that beanie on, you just look like a lopsided dildo. Anyway, um, so uh, everybody everybody deserves a win. And tonight what I wanted to speak to you about, Luke, is uh, how you go about um, about building a competitive list right, fr right from the get-go. What, what is the, the very first thing somebody needs to do if they want to um, look at building an army that is going to hold its own on the table against somebody uh, like yourself or the Clan Filth guys or anybody else that's going to be at CanCon. Let's just say it's me um, and my one goal is to um, kick Doom and Darkness's ass at CanCon. Walk me through it. What okay. So obviously, you've got to pick a faction first that you'd like. Obviously, you don't want to play an army, regardless of whether an army's strong or not strong in the meta. It all depends on if you like the models, to be honest. How do you pick an army then? Then the models. Like, I mean, if you don't like an army's models, why would you build an army around it at all? Regardless, like, Stormcasts are a strong army. I don't like the models, so I don't have a Stormcast army. That's because you've got shit taste in armies, but we'll get to that <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so, and and, guess... and what's, the, what's the smartest way to go about looking at models? Because there's a lot out there. Like, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of little plastic men. Go to a shop or go and watch an event and watch people playing with armies and things like that or um, just look online. Read some of the fluff, maybe. That's what I do. That's why yeah. I love chaos. If fluff is your thing, read fluff first and then pick a faction out of that that you think you might like the middle models of and go from there. I, yeah, I think models are a huge part. Like if you don't like the models, you're not going to enjoy playing with the army at all. Yeah, okay. All right, so let's say um, I've gone into a GW store. Let's say uh, Chermside GW, shout out to Andrew and the boys there. Um, they actually helped me pick my first army. Um, so I've gone there and I've decided, right, I, um, I really want to play Nurgle. Yeah. So I've, and, and that's just because I like how gross they are. Yeah. So I've picked, I've picked, I pick Nurgle. What, what's the next step after we've picked our, our army? Um, if you're building it specifically for tournaments, you should read the players' packs that you're going to be going to play in these events and see what scenarios they're going to be using, how scoring is done, because that really influences how you're going to build your list, which is the next part of what you need to do, which is build your army list. 
So I, I need to build something that's going to um, kick a kick a bit of face in at my um, with my gaming group because I I keep getting my butt kicked. Um, so just me. So what can you do I to be? Yeah, but I also want to do something to you know to a tournament. Um, just so so something that I know is going to be a you know a fairly good all rounder, but but will definitely hold its own. So let's just say we don't have player packs. We don't have we don't have what. We don't have any player packs, so there's no, like I don't know what GT I'm going to yet, but I know I need to build a competitive. You just want to bring in, build a strong army for events. Yeah. Um. So, well, I guess look in your army list. Look in your like what, what models you can choose from as far as like the war scrolls. Try and find any sort of combinations that you think might work. That's one thing I always look for when building an army list. Is like, obviously, like heroes can buff certain units in in certain ways and. Try and read, read through all the war scrolls so you know them really well from your faction, and then build an army around that. So yeah, and and a lot of the war scrolls are free, aren't they, on the GW website? They're all free on the on the GW. Yeah, website. so you don't even need to commit to uh, to something straight away and go out and buy the battle tome or anything like that. You can just jump online. Yeah, just look at the war scrolls on the uh, Games Workshop website first. Yeah, and then and and I guess also as part of that, when you're trying to find combos and read those war scrolls and that, um, there's a, a, a bunch of stuff online. Is there anywhere that you go in particular when you're looking for stuff? Do you have a, a forum or a Facebook page or something like that that um, you turn to to talk to other people in the hobby to find inspiration or, or maybe advice? TGA forums are really good for it to look at like what's going on in the UK um, and what lists and things are strong at the moment over there. Um, Facebook's really good, like all the different um, Facebook groups that there are around the place, including like the different the faction specific ones. Uh, yeah, and then I just chat with a bunch of my mates and stuff as well, in out with our group, and we sort of play test and things like that. Throw yeah. this. And what if what if you're more like Brindley and just don't have any friends? <laughs> <laughs> Go to your local store and just like play games, play lots of games. I'll, I'll have you know, I've been frequenting the TGA forum to learn all the dirty, dirty Slaves of Darkness tactics. Oh, which, dude, yeah, yeah, the the Grand Alliance are forums are so good yeah. um, for yeah. stuff like that. I love them. And and not only that, but there's also some awesome stories there. Plus, yeah. once all the GTs finish, people analyse them and leave posts on the forums about um, about the matches. And, and a lot of the um, the, a lot of the people that are analysing them are people that actually play those matches. So yeah, I found it a really good place when I was building my free guild arm um, because um, Paul Conti told me to stop calling him all the time for free guild advice, um, and that I should just be happy with the the seventy five lists he sent me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we've um, we've looked at the combos. We've gone on to TGA forums. We've spoken to our mates in that in our gaming group and on Facebook, and we've read a lot of the War Scrolls and that. And I've decided, um, I've decided, yeah, I like Nurgle. I'm going to go Rockbringers, um, and I just go out and I buy all the Blight Kings, just all of them. I've I've bought every Blight King in the world. Fuck you all. I have, I have all the I have all the Blight Kings. Um, You've got so many, it's ridiculous. It's a shelf full of fucking black yeah, kings. It like, can be yeah. somewhat overwhelming sometimes when you've just made Definitely. a considerable uh, investment into plastic crack. Um, yep. How, how do you, you spend on? Yeah. yeah, where do you start? How much spent on your Nurgle, Ryan? Say again, sorry. How, how much do you reckon you spent on your Nurgle? <laughs> 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 Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I'm not. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I, 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 I got most of my Nurgle through uh, trades. Um, I won some. Um, and, uh, <laughs> and I also actually got a uh, Glockin uh, for my birthday. <laughs> so I, I got really lucky. I've I've gotten really lucky yeah, when it comes to that's um, incredible, that's an incredible story. No wonder you yeah. are so overwhelmed with such a with such a um, full bank account and um, such a 
generous Nogal army. <laughs> uh, if anybody would like to donate more Nogal to the cause, please don't send them to Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I've picked, I've picked Nogal, and um, I guess now you've got to go through the process of of deciding how you're going to put this whole army together. How am I going to uh, how am I going to get this army together? It's just all in boxes on sprue, and I I got no idea. Um, well, you've got to build it. Obviously, you've got to cut it out of the plaque, like, out of the sprues, and start building it, putting it together. But I think as far as it's it really, you've got to build your army, design your army list around how you want to play and things like that as well. Um, yeah. I think if you're running in your list, like for Nurgle, for instance, um, if you're running lots of Blight Kings, you probably want to run that formation that um, has all the Blight Kings in it because why not? It gives them quite a substantial boost. It's not that expensive. And they're your battle line units anyway. So they're already... They're battle, battle line units, yeah. yeah. So they're going to be in your army. Um, if you've got the points... Chuck in a Glockkin. The model's awesome. My only thing about the Glockkin is I think it's still probably overcosted because it doesn't have a save versus mortal wounds. Definitely. I, I wouldn't, I would personally, I'm just going off a bit, but I would never use the Glockkin in anything under a 2,000 point game. Anything under a 2,000 point game, I would totally take the Harbinger with Festus right yeah, up yeah. his clacker the whole way. Yeah, I think I'd still probably take even at 2,000 points. I'd still probably wouldn't bother with Glockkin until about 2,500. I just don't think he's worth it for his price yet still but he's such a sexy model you he's gotta use model. him just superb he's a great model but he's just yeah i don't know if he's really worth it in under in <laughs> can't go find his miniatures oh okay um yeah he just wanders off he just wanders off it happens old age oh wait, there he is here he is look at him how can you not how do yeah, you no. not want to like, he's just so hot, mate. And look at that bum, actually, now that we're here. Yes, that booty. You know, that, yeah, is, that is a booty. That's an arch right there. It's a nice booty. It he's, is. Uh, he's such a cool mini. Um, he's so he's cool. Extremely expensive. Mm, they get that to the table. Um, I would, I personally, um, yeah, anything, maybe 2,000 points, I would actually stick with Harbinger and Festus if I was being serious. And yeah. take, like... Morbid X twice born and just spew out Nurglings everywhere. Um, you know, ha use your um, use your Blight Kings in groups of five, but keep them real close to each other because that whole healing thing that they've got going on where they can heal themselves and anything within was it three inches of each other. Yeah, I um, think other Blight Kings is really cool. Plus, you've got the free heals from um, Festus as well. You've also got um, Harbinger hanging out, and then if you can take like. A Chaos War Shrine and a whole bunch of Marauders. Yeah, for some screening units. and Yeah, you know, yeah. I do think you need some speed in there as well. Um, that's one of Nurgle's downfalls is they don't have a lot of speed. So either I found a way to counter that, though. What would you just suggest? Just to set two Plague Claws right at the back of my deployment zone and just rain shit on everybody. Like, yeah. literal, literally shit. shit. That's literally pretty much shit. what they're tossing is, like, a whole bunch of crap. So... Yeah, and you definitely want your uh, um, play claws in there for sure. They're so good at, especially at the, in the current meta against hordes. Yeah, hundred percent. Yes. Um, do they ignore cover? Uh, no, they can just see without line of sight. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. They see without line of sight, which is really cool. Um, because you're you're right, Nurgle. When it comes to movement, they're really bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, and it's so sucks. It's the nothing's worse than than knowing you've got this resilient army and they are resilient. Yeah. But because it takes so long to get across the board, sometimes you just can't win that attrition battle and you eventually just go fuck. Oh, yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Um all right, so we've um we've we've researched it. Obviously, um we're talking a lot a lot about it, so we, we know a bit more about the army now. Um we've started to build it. Um I've packed the shits halfway through building it and got uh, John Priest from Warrior Lodge and uh, Brindley to build the rest of them um, because I'm hopeless. And I've got it back. Giant how do I, how do I um, 
decide how I want to paint my army uh, and and in what order? Um, I'd start with my battle line units, I guess, and probably like one model as a test model first. Have a look online and just see what you like online and maybe either replicate a colour scheme you find on there or pick parts of a colour scheme you like online and do a bit of a test model. That's normally what I do. Okay, cool. And um, what about stuff like, like I'm new to painting still um, and I'm not very good, but uh, I can I can follow instructions. Um, <laughs> I really am not a good painter, <laughs> like at all. Um, like if is, you, there, is there a, a, a color numbers. that I can go fuck yourself, Brindley, get um, some <laughs> sort of like instructions or is there like videos out there somewhere in particular um, for like, you know, the person who's not very good at painting new models or? There's heaps on YouTube. There's heaps of painting tutorials on YouTube. Um, and there's also like you could always go into a Games Workshop store and I'm sure someone like one of the staff would more than be happy to show you how to do some basic painting or shading and things like that. I know that's where when I first got in the hobby, I just went to the Games Workshop every weekend for like three or four weeks and just learn how to paint. And that's 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 really cool um, because <coughs> whilst, uh, a lot of these <coughs> little plastic men, yeah, that's it, choke friendly, um, <laughs> it costs a lot of money, utilise the store as well and go in and the very person who sold you that stuff can also sit down with you and, and paint. Like um, I know G-Dub at Chermside has tables where you can just go in, take your hobby, take your paints, and you're going to buy paints there anyway. Um, yeah. And... And you can you can paint at their desks and stuff as well. And I mean, look at the display stuff. Just in the and the stores that we have here locally, like the guys that work there know their shit as well. So, oh, awesome. Um, with with my uh, Nurgle, um, Duncan did a, a series that's on YouTube as well uh, for painting Nurgle. He um, he used what did he use? He's done one of the Maggoth Lords, I know that, and I think he's also done, he's done a few anyway, um, and they're really cool. So, yeah, yeah, there is a lot out there. It's 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 hard if you want to pick your own sort of theme, though. Do you know what I mean? To like, a point, I'm, you can pull out the guides and just change the colours. I did that for my Archaeon. I used um, the Warhammer TV guide uh, yeah. from Duncan. And just change the colours. Yeah, I've never thought about that. Yeah, yeah. And it's not too hard to do. Not really. You just have to like. I had to watch the video quite a few times first, and then just sort of adapted the colours, like for the blending in particular, with the colours that I wanted to use instead. Mm, nice. Yeah. Okay. Um, Wednesday has also said in chat as well that some decent FLGS. I don't know what that means. Is that an acronym I'm, I'm supposed to know? Not sure. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, also um, host hobby nights and have permanent painting bars uh, where you can even airbrush if you're, if you're uh, that way inclined. That's and cool. by the way, I don't believe airbrushes are cheating. I believe it's just a way of taking your painting to the next level um, and doing things that sometimes you just can't do with a brush. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's just Oh, friendly local gaming store, FLGS. There you go. There yeah. we go. So you've got like good games, uh, Clanger, you've got your games workshop stores down south side. Definitely like, I don't know of many places that have a regular painting thing. The only group I know who do that are Irresistible Fools down in Tanamira. Okay. Um, they've got some cool painters um, down there. Yeah, man, if you, I guess if you wanted to do some cool painting, I'd head down that way. Yeah. Uh, I can't think of anywhere else. Or just watch YouTube channels. Go nuts. Yeah, and then there's like if you if if you are somebody who's always been into hobby, um, but not so much into gaming uh, sort of thing, and now you're starting to come out and go, oh yeah, I really want to play and and that sort of thing. If you're more and a more advanced painter, um, Vince from uh, Warhammer Weekly's uh, got some amazing videos out there. His um, hobby cheating stuff's really good as well. And um, and there's just some 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 major awesome tips and tricks on there that I would definitely suggest to anybody who would like to take it to the next level. Um, 
I'm trying to think of what else there was as well. There's actually a few, um, for those of you who aren't uh, paintbrush inclined at all, there's um, commission painters as well. Yeah. Is yeah. that an option or is that, is that, is that a no-no? You can get commission painters. I've got nothing against people um, commissioning other people to do their work. Obviously, if you enjoy your hobby and you can afford to get someone to paint your miniatures for you, by all means, go for it. Yeah, I agree. If, yeah. Just don't be that guy who enters who enters a commission painted army into uh, a painting competition or a painting component of a tournament and then be like, yeah, these are mine because that's 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 uncool. Don't do that. Don't be that person. Yeah, I agree with that. Too. <laughs> so it's go, let's go further into that. Let's just say that I, I have commission painted my entire army. Yep. And I'm taking it into a tournament. And I've entered it into the um, best painting competition as well. Yeah, you should. Well, really if you cool. if you if you somehow manage to win, you should probably give that prize to the person who painted your army. So, Hundred percent. Yes. And be clear. Yeah, at the very least, I would. Be okay, so I think most TOs might not allow you to enter it into the into that category though, purely because you didn't paint it. Unless you promise to give the prize directly to the person who won, especially if they're also at that tournament. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> there was actually, now that I think about it, if I ever enter my Nurgle uh, into uh, Best Painted, um, my prize would actually go to, um, to Knuckle Deep uh, Commission Painting. Um, they're Brisbane-based. Yeah, Knuckle Deep. Giggity, giggity, giggity. All right. Um, <laughs> Who so thinks of that name? That's really painted by, the, um, by, by, knuckle, by the Knuckle Deep team. Uh, and it's it's pretty pretty damn sexy, actually. This camera doesn't do it in justice. But, like, even just the detail of the... Like, that's human skin as a rug down there and stuff. It's Yeah, so um, that's, that's from the Knuckle Deep boys. Uh, they're pretty damn good. So Brinley has also painted my Stormcast. Um, so I can never receive a prize for the Stormcast. He's done an uh, absolutely thoroughly impressive subpar average job um, <laughs> of my Stormcast. His wet blending is second to most, uh, and I really, really appreciate the uh, the edge highlighting that he hasn't done yeah. on most of the models. So, um, yeah, 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 edge highlighting. <laughs> I'm going to paint everywhere now. <laughs> he, he can still redeem himself and actually paint my hurricane. You're just going to have a giant hurricane instead of there being like the big consolation <laughs> thing, like swirling dildos now. You can, <laughs> you can look um, forward to and, it. And the only reason why I'm actually no. mentioning Knuckle Deep is because I'm actually about to get the rest of my noble, hopefully painted by them. And I don't actually know of many other commission painters in the Brisbane area, um, but it'd really be nice to um, to hear from you if you're out there, by the way, um, because I've got like twelve fucking armies. Yeah, <laughs> none it's of like Ryan's probably all mine people. So just 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 throw your services at him like the whores you are. Yeah. Actually, be with him. He's gone again. No, his, his old age, he's hit the wrong button again. Yeah, I'm still here. <laughs> John, John, uh, but for those of you oh. that, that aren't aware, it's a tradition on a Monday in Australia to not wear pants. Um, yeah, we're not wearing pants. As such, I need to turn my camera off when I get up. So this was also um, from Knuckle Deep. That's nice. Yeah, so I got, this, I got this mini right uh, for about $8. Um, it had been eaten by a dog. Like, actually, it was a true toy. There was bits of the wing broken off um, on the wing here. And it was all chewed. It was terrible. Um, but, yeah, so Knuckle Deep guys came through and smashed it. So um, it looks really good. Yeah. So definitely pro commission painting. <laughs> Yeah, like, all the stuff like I look at I look at your army's loop and and also Brinley's tower as well, and I can't mm. help but be jealous um, that you've both managed to put in time and effort and made stuff look really good yourself. 
It's just something I can't I can't actually do. Um, but I have it's an just, immense it's amount of respect for people just, who do it. It's literally just being in the hobby long enough to be able to apply paint for X amount of hours to miniatures. Yeah, it's lots then of work at it. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I've 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 um I've managed to get my army painted anyway. And um, and I've decided uh, I really don't like this guy, Luke um, Taylor. Let's just say I'm just pulling a name out of out of nowhere. Um, I I think he's got a bit of a fucking ego on him, and I need to bring him down. Well, a bit. So I've got to sign myself up for CanCon, right? Yep. Um, I live in Brisbane. CanCon's in Canberra. Yep. Which I think you have to go. Up to Singapore, down to Tasmania, and then after you swing around by Perth, you try not to blink so you don't miss Auckland, and then you end up in Canberra, which is the second capital city next to Sydney. Yeah, yeah that's pretty much it. That's pretty yeah, accurate. Okay. Um, the fake capital to how, to keep how the terrorists. On earth do you get two thousand points of Nurgle halfway across? An island that's much bigger than the UK. You have to get a good case. Okay, I'm not lying when I say, and Brinley will will attest to this. I put all mine inside a box or on a breakfast and bed tray, and no, it's not magnetized or anything. That that shit just slides around everywhere. So that's probably not going to work for a flight to Canberra. No, it's not. So I drove there last year. I put mine all in a box, but I packed it all full of foam and we drove down and it was pretty safe like that. If you can get a box that will fit in carry-on that you can, like, pack full of foam, that's kind of, as far as I, I know, that's about your only option of getting it on a plane or a good case. Yeah. So let's just say I'm driving then. Yeah, well, you could just pack it in a box and... Go down to Bunnings and get some of that acoustic foam and pack it around your models so they don't move too much, and you should be fine. That's all I did last year. Didn't have any breaks at all. Mm, okay, I know. Um, so then the Michael approach won't work. And when I say Michael, now I'm talking Thurman Dartmouth. Um, recently he uh, put all of his um, or boys or whatever they called, you know, the pineapples and all that. Um, <laughs> onto a tray in the back of his um, Land Cruiser, which is like Ute. I'm talking the Ute tray. Yeah. And drove it to a, to a local tournament. Yeah, I don't know if that would work. <laughs> he did it, man. He did it, and everything was fine. Like, and I remember Seems looking. Legit. I remember looking at the the pictures and video that he that he um, sent to us about it, thinking. That wouldn't work for me. I would, like, they would be inside the windscreen of the car behind me and I would be exchanging these yeah. But some people just have luck. Driving to camera too, that's 14 hours. They've got to sit in the back of the ute like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, so I'm 17 um, and I live at home with my, with my parents still and I've been saving up all of my, uh, all of my pennies from my uh, paper out job and I've spent all of it on um, these disgusting uh, Nurgle uh, plastic figurines um, that mummy was very unhappy with me getting because she believes I should be spending more time at church and not at a games workshop store. So I don't have any money left to buy a big expensive case. Is there yeah, an alternative? You. you can. So super cheap. Uh, auto have like tool cases that have foam inserts and you can pull out the foam inserts to like this the same sort of configuration as the games workshop cases for like I think I got mine for thirty dollars and it's like the same size as the large games workshop case. Okay. That is a cheaper alternative if you want the hard case. Or as I said, you could just get like the plastic containers from Bunnings and some foam and for about yeah. 20 bucks, you should have a pretty good case. That's pretty cheap in comparison, I guess. Um, but I, like, I I, uh, I do see the benefit in the GW cases because they're, they're, they're purpose-built for that. 
Um, so if you can afford it, go and get one. But if you do need to save some fingers, yeah, just totes, totes make one. Um, super cheap order are pretty good for that sort of thing. Uh, coupled with Bunnings, yeah, you're right. Okay, so I've got the transport sorted. I've got an army painted. Um, I've sort of got three lists uh, together and the tournament's in, in two weeks' time. Um, how do I decide on what list I'm going to take out of those three? Because I do believe as well that um, you're currently in a similar predicament. Yeah, I'm sort of still deciding on my list for Masters. i got to submit by tomorrow. So I'm sort of stuck between three lists. Um, I what, guess is, is any mini mighty mo a legitimate way of deciding? Yes, it honestly is, or rolling a dice, especially if you uh, feel comfortable playing all three lists to the same level, all that sort of thing. If everything's like dead even, and it's literally just you just can't decide, then you might as well roll a dice. <laughs> I've done that before. And did it work out for you? Uh, yeah, it did. <laughs> that would never work for me. I See, I'd be like, okay... On a two, I'll take that one. On a three, I'll take that one. On a four, I'll take that one. And I'll roll snake eyes or some shit. And I'll just have to, like, forfeit straight away. <laughs> or, no, like, no. I'll roll the dice and it'll shatter the glass table that my army's sitting on and they'll all fall. <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's made the choice for you, hasn't it? You've got to choose the one you didn't just smash. So. Yeah, true that, true that. <laughs> so is there, is there, what's, what's the easiest way, though, of picking a list? So I've got three. I'm not sure which one's going to be the best. Um, is there something I can do to kind of decide? Bring the one you're most comfortable with. Yeah. That's probably all I can say. And, and I mean, how do you get comfortable with a list? At, at, like, you've got two weeks. How do you? Well, I would hope that prior to the two weeks, you'd been playing practice games with all three of those lists, or at least enough that you know how they all work properly against certain matchups and things like that. So it should be really just coming down to, I guess, I guess the models or um, one that you've played more, more than the others. Okay. All right. So so play testings, play test your list, basically. Um, yeah. Is what you're practice, saying. Practice, practice, practice. Fair enough, dude. Fair enough. All right. Um, so I've, I've practiced with my list. I'm fairly comfortable. I've picked number two. Um, it's probably going to lose against everybody else, but it's going to beat that loot guy, and that's the whole reason that I'm going there for. Yeah. Um, I, I, I borrow my auntie's uh, Mazda 2, and I fill it full of $45 worth of E10 unleaded, and I drive to, to Canberra. Yeah. I get there. My army's out. What do I do? I'm nervous as hell, and I think I'm about to get my ass kicked. Then you go and you put vomit on your spaghetti and your hands are shaking. <laughs> Tournaments are really once, like that, though. Like, once I, once, I guess once you get there and say hello to a few people and everyone's a lot more friendly than I think people imagine the whole thing's going to be. Um, Let's meet Ryan. Yeah. Well, I mean, what Australia basically did was look at the UK and said, I'm going to have my own GT with blackjack and hookers, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So that's not so bad. Yeah. Um, so so a nerves a thing though? Like is that something that you've got to sort of I mean, you're taking your army down there, it's your first grand tournament, you know, is there is that something that's kind of a big deal for people usually? Do you did you get nervous on your first one or you know, was there a bit of pee? Did you pee a little bit? My first tournament was, My first tournament was God so many years ago, back in like sixth edition war game or so. I was actually just really looking forward to having like a whole weekend of playing games because against different people. So I don't think I was really nervous. I was more excited about, yeah, being able to play against armies that I'd never played against because I was still fairly new in the game as well. So I just got straight into playing tournaments. That was back when Games Workshop used to run GTs themselves. Wow. Oh, so they used to actually run them because... I mean, most of us weren't still weren't gaming in the 1940s, so um, <laughs> we, tell us more about it, man. Ha, yeah, ha, so they used, were run differently back then. Yeah, they used to run a grand tournament every year um, in every... I'm not sure if it was in every state or um, specifically, but I know I went to two of them 
while they were still running them, and that was towards the end of 6th edition, and then basically the independent scene sort of took over from there. There were so many events uh, in the independent scene. The biggest event in Australia back then was for Warhammer Fantasy. It was called DogCon. There was normally about 100 players that would play. I went down to that. That was held in Sydney. That was an awesome event. That was the second tournament I ever went to. Um, it was probably one of the most tournament fun tournaments I've ever been to to date still. So, Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So I'm really looking forward to CanCon next year because it's, it's, like it's at that level now. Uh, I know Clint from Heralds is hoping for 100 players. I think he can probably – I think he can easily get that next year with how much uh, it's, it's grown this year. I think – I think it, um, yeah, I, I agree, but I think that any most other people would have a lot of trouble with that. Um, Clint's very successful um, because he's he himself is a nice guy and he's he's quite respected in the community and stuff like that. And like I, for one, uh, if he was holding something, I'd go. Like if he said, "Hey Ryan, can you come to this thing?" I'd be like, "Yeah, buddy. Do I have are pants uh, optional?" Like that'd be my only yep. question. Do I have to wear pants? Other than that, I'm there. I'm like, I think a uh, hundred people. I think he could he could top that even. Like, it's yeah, and 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 it is growing. You're right. Um, so, so I get there. I, I beat this Luke guy, and I'm really happy. Um, I uh, he falls over and cries. Um, I teabag him, and. Uh, <laughs> And, and I come home, um, and I tell my mummy all about it, and and um, she says that's good. that that's great, son. You know, um, good on you. Yeah, back to church, little shit. <laughs> how um, <laughs> how, how do you how do you keep up that momentum? So you've got a you've got a win, or maybe you didn't get a win, maybe you lost, but you still got that momentum of right. I've built an army. I've gone to a GT. Um, how do you keep that going? Because I know it's a hobby, but sometimes it's just really hard to. How do you put? It? Why do today what you can put off till tomorrow? You know, um, how how do you keep the momentum and keep going? I guess you just keep playing. I know after events, I'm normally more excited to play more. Normally, you would think that after playing two days straight at Warhammer, you'd be like over it and not want to play. But I reckon, for me, it's like oh, I had if I had such a good weekend, it's like oh, I really want to keep playing more and keep having fun and. Um, yeah, I guess I just I just keep playing. That's probably the best way to keep the momentum is practice every week. I try and have like one day a week that one night a week that's dedicated to just gaming, and then one night a week that's dedicated to just hobby plus anything else I can do on a weekend. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess just you just got to play, and then you'll 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 get better and better at the game, which will make you more and more competitive at the game. Um, and you'll think about they start thinking about the game in a different way. Cool. And um, the one thing I noticed none of us have actually spoken about and I think can really help as well is bat reps. Yeah. Um, bat reps are there everywhere. They're, it's, bat reps are like headlights. Once you watch one, you they, they start to pop up on your YouTube feed everywhere and yeah. then you can't yeah. get rid of them. Um, I have yeah. a lot of trouble watching bat reps. I just... I just can't, I can't sit through a whole one. I'll either find myself watching the start of it and then skipping to the last turn. I like and watching the uh, Warhammer TV ones on Twitch. Yeah, uh, I'm not as huge a fan of watching a lot of the pre-recorded ones because some of them don't get the rules quite right. Um, or for me, I'm like, obviously I'm more of a competitive player. So when they're running all the narrative videos and things like that, that doesn't really do anything for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, I, I think the reason I like them is, um, and I, even even the ones like that don't get the rules right, um, but not so much like the full blown. You know, um, we've got seven cameras at four angles in three hundred and sixty degrees, three D from the from the roof and from you know all that. No, nah, like um, ones where a couple of guys have had a game and they've just ripped out their phones, and you can watch a quick ten minute. Um, you know, at three times speed match and, and learn some, some tricky little movement shenanigans or something um, that, that might help, you know. Uh, it's, it's always good to, to check it out because the one thing that I've learned is the more I know, 
about my army, the more I realise I don't know shit. <laughs> and um, it's not frustrating. It's more. It's it's more kind of uh, I guess eye opening. You, just yeah, when you yeah. think that you've sussed something out, you go, "Holy crap!" Are you telling me that I can transport those units all the way across the map for free? I yeah. never knew that. And it changes the whole way you play. And you might take the same army to the next GT, but you've got a different battalion, yeah. for yeah. example, and that just changes everything. The whole game styles change. The whole play styles change. Your whole mentality towards your force, your army, and, and how you actually use it um, and how you make use of the synergies that you have can completely change just by watching a 10-minute bat rep and going, oh, my God, that was so tricky. Wait, it wasn't official. Better check Warhammer TV first to make sure that that's okay. Yep, sweet. Dum, 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 dum. Yep. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, and that's when I like play testing. Like when I first learned about Vanguard Wing, <coughs> I was like, all right, I want to see the limitations of this ridiculously filthy fucking... There are none. It doesn't have limitations. It does what it wants. Yeah, so... <laughs> I, I literally, I just went, boom, picked up my Liberators and dropped them right in the middle on turn one of um, Brinley's entire army, like entire army. And yeah. um, <laughs> they straight away, they wiped out a Vortex Beast and most of a Demon Prince um, before they all got demolished and surrounded by like Chosen. Yeah. Everything else. Um, and it made me go, right, okay, I know the limitations now. <laughs> um, yeah. And... It's a really, really cool battalion, and it changed the way that I play um, to the point where I was like, "No, you can't take this. You can't take this to to a to a gaming gaming group's little uh, you know tournament sort of thing. Um, it's not nice." <laughs> so they're out there, and you still and 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 I'm still learning as well. Um, yeah. And do do you find do you find that you do the same thing? Do you, I mean, you've played a lot more games than I have. Um, but are you, do you still find that you don't know shit about, like, Skaven, for example? Of course there's stuff that I don't, like, yeah, that you still pick up as you play. And it's 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 not just about different combos. It's also about different ways to use those combos within within the game as well, um, which can make, a, make you use your army totally different. It might be, as you say, the exact same list, but you might just use the army completely different because of the way the scenario rules work or something like that as well. Yeah. So you, I guess you never stop, really. It's it's an ongoing thing because just when you start to get really, really good at your army, bang, GHB 2018 comes around and you're fucked and you've got to start again. <laughs> yeah, meta reset, everything changes. Like the, the Horde rule just changed the game completely. Like it's really promoting yeah. large units, like high model count armies. And same with even some of the scenarios where like they give you the preference, if you have one model from a unit that has 20 or more, do you capture that objective even if the enemy has, like, 10 models yeah. within range of the objective? Yeah, and I think um, I think that GW did us all a service bringing in, um, bringing, making hordes a bit more viable. Um, I don't I don't believe in the whole horde meta. Like, I do, I, I do believe that there's a much better place in armies now for 40 skeletons or 30 yeah. liberators. Um but I wouldn't say, yeah, just take 120 skeletons. Like, no way. No, I think uh, I think CanCon's going to really sort of show everyone too what the meta is going to be looking like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and 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 that's different from place to place. Like Australia's yeah. um, meta is a lot different to say the UK, um, yeah. where where um where Stormcast One in the UK, I expect there to be um, a, a, a different outcome. At CanCon, I have my favourites that I'm betting on. Um, so, and none of them are Stormcast. Yeah, well, I mean, it's in darkness. Plan Scry has done terrible in the UK, yet I've won four major events with it this year. Yeah, well, yeah, I, and that's yeah, that's that's that definitely just goes to show it. It just depends on 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 where you are and the people you're playing as well. Um, and it, and it, and it's because people's mentality over here is different to over there. There's a lot more people with different, um, you know, with with let's just say there's a lot more Stormcast players over there, whereas over here there's a lot more of the the, the Orcs and the and the Skaven and the stuff like that as well. So, um, yeah. I think it'd be really cool to have like a 
like a World Cup. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. So, what I I guess um, we've 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 covered everything. Um, I think, and now everybody out there can go and purchase a noble army. The commission painters, and you know, yeah. I mean, you mean acquire acquire Nurgle army in trades and birthday presents. That's it, and and Nurgle are going to get some love soon. Um, but you mentioned you haven't picked your list yet, and you've got till tomorrow. Yeah. Aren't you like you don't look worried at all? I'd be shitting bricks, mate. No, I'm not worried. Like I know that I can play any of the lists that I. And choosing from it's just deciding which one I want to take in the end. I'll probably end up rolling a dice to be honest tomorrow afternoon, and that'll be that's, how I pick. that's messed up. So, <laughs> you're going to roll the dice to pick an army to take to the Australian Masters of AOS, yeah, which basically you're defending a title, more or less. <laughs> trying to, trying to, I guess. Well, hopefully, I can be the first Australian Master, but there's Everyone there's in good contention for it. Everyone, everyone going is a really good player. Who, who's who? Do you think your uh, your biggest challenge will be? Um. Well, I haven't beaten Chris Welfare before in a tournament. We've played twice, and he's beaten me twice. Oh, so. Well, Chris, coming for you. There you go. <laughs> um. So yeah, we'll see yeah. how we go. Right. Well, I really hope that um that Chris wipes the floor with your face. Um, so. <laughs> I've got to get one win against him. <laughs> no, that, that's that's going to be really cool. And where's where's Masters being held? Oh God, let me just bring it up. Um, it's in Brisbane this year. Um, Northside, I'm fairly certain. It's around your neck of the woods. I'm fairly certain. Let me just oh, pick up. Oh, I don't have more of you bloody guys around here. What? It's going to be at the Crown Hotel on the second and third of December. Wow. Okay. Nice. We may yeah. need to try and get there. Um, I will have to. Yes, yeah, welcome. So yeah, no, I'll um, I'll 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 check how many brownie points I've got in the bank. Um, <laughs> not many. I'm pretty sure I might be running on empty. Uh, yeah, yeah no, we'll definitely have to check that out. Anyway, that's um, that is that is it for how to uh, build a competitive list. Those are the steps really that you need to sort of go through um, to make sure that you can come out with a list that uh, can smash a bit of face because I guess um, while there is a place at every club for the starter set with a few little additions, um, taking it to that next level, you've really got to sort of put in a bit more time and research um, and, and, and understand your army a bit better and spend a bit more time on it and, and, and really get to know it. Um, I want to use the word intimately, but I really don't want to, you know, have a Facebook page covered in a bunch of photos of people making out with their plastic soldiers. So <laughs> we actually want that, please, by all means. <laughs> to that Ryan's box first. That I'll is... polish his. I'll put his. I'll put his email up later. You guys send it. <laughs> And he's, and he's, 50 and shades of grandfather Nurgle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's going to get messy. <laughs> no, don't. Um, okay, so Nurglings everywhere. I think um, I think I think we've covered everything there. And um, for good. for for those people that are new to the tournament scene, the beauty tournament scene, and all that sort of thing. Um, once they have got their army together and everything, what, have you got one piece of advice for anybody who wants to be competitive, maybe win a few prizes and stuff like that? Um, honestly, just practice a lot. That's my greatest, my biggest bit of advice would be just to practice. The only way you're going to get better at the game is by playing more. So, yeah, practice, practice. practice That's where I'm falling short. See, it's also good to know how all your like how all the arm different armies work, not just how yours works, because then you know how to beat the other armies. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, fucking Wednesday. Next week, show us your best O face with your models. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> Ridley, let's do it. 
do it. I want a thumbnail on Facebook by tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> right. Can do. Um, and while we're at it, there's been a fair bit of conversation going on here, so I'm just going to say as well, um, the question was asked, uh, what's a good amount of scenery for an average game of AOS? Um, and the popular response seems to be 10. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, Wednesday said to say that he loves you, Hobo God. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Hobo God, <laughs> his blessing. Dude, Hobo this guy's such a... Honestly, he's like the only Queenslander that drinks VB. Like... <laughs> Oh, VB's disgusting. Right? Mate, I'll glass you. I will fucking wreck your day. See? I'll come down to Wellington Point and flip your house. It is worse than American beer. That's how bad it is. Yeah. Oh. 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 Mate, nothing's as bad as Budweiser. Come on. Mate, that's that's stuff. Another level. That stuff. VB tastes like watered down Budweiser. That's why when Americans say they can handle their piss, you have to ask them what kind of beer they're drinking. Yeah. Because, like, I could drink water till the cows come home too. <laughs> <laughs> that light beer. How yeah. many drinks is this? What do you mean? It's just one drink. No, like, how many alcoholic serves is it? I don't know, like, 0.25. <laughs> like, yeah. holy shit, dude. It's, it's, it's pretty bad. Um, all right. I think that sums that up for, uh, for our feature segment today. Um, Thank you very much, Luke, for joining us. Thanks for having me. That's pretty bloody awesome. Um, best of luck with Masters as well. Um, I will be rooting for all of our local boys here in Brisbane, um, but especially you because you're sexy. <laughs> yeah. You came on the show, so we have to. <laughs> 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 Fuck that, mate. You know me. I give everybody shit. Did you, did you, poor Liam, mate. That guy copped it off us last time, eh? He did. did. Yeah, we fed him. I went back Liam, we want you some of it. Just so we can feed you some more. Yeah. That was terrible. <laughs> I shouldn't have been that mean to that poor little emo. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone heard from him? Hey. He's no, I'm just scared dead. that, like, one day, like, I'll get a knock on the door and it's going to be all of clan filth and there's just going to be, like, a dozen dudes wearing nothing but black and I don't even see their faces because their fringe covers it. And they're all like, <laughs> we heard what they you said about our boy Liam. You probably, you probably just have, like, an yeah. old man moment to go to give them, like, candy because you think it's Halloween or something. And you'd be like, here you go, kids. All right, get off my fucking lawn. <laughs> <laughs> we're not happy about it, so we're all going to sit here quietly and sob discreetly into our laps. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry. I actually really love the clan fourth guys. They're really good. They're a good. They're a good group of guys. They get so blah. That's yeah. what you get, Liam. Miss you, buddy. Come back on the show already. It's been too long. Yeah, love it. Love um, it. Right. So that's it. Um, have you got anything else, Brinley, that you'd like to add? No, no man, big old. Oh, have you got right. anything that you'd like to add, buddy? Uh, no, I've got nothing I'd like to add. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry. Go, Brinley, go. I'm sorry. No, nah, big old shout out to our subscribers, all 130 of you. Love it. Thanks for everyone who joined us in the chat tonight. It was a big, big deal seeing everyone there. Um, we don't have any sponsors. Uh, I should thank our wives for letting us do this on a Monday night. I mean, it could be washing dishes or something. Um, no, dude, no, mine's, mine's somewhere in one of the other media rooms watching, like, a catch of books and films or something. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. We're done. Yeah. We'll probably, we'll, um, we've got some footage from our, our tournament that we did at Warrior Lodge. I think we're going to be uploading it at some point. Yeah. Do some sort of fancy media stuff. Who knows? Uh, it depends. It just depends how we go. We're both busy people. Like we do have full time jobs and families. So, oh shit, I've got a job. Yeah, I forgot about that. I should go I should. to that sometime. You'd probably get around to that. You'd probably do that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Other than that, that's 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 been pretty much us. This has been the tenth episode of Ozhammer. We're just happy for you guys to be here watching us. It was good to see you guys. Can't wait to catch you guys later.
That's it. And, uh, and Luke, thanks again, buddy. It was awesome to have you on. Uh, as always, you're always welcome uh, on Oz Hammer. Just crash anytime you want, buddy. Good luck with everything. And we will be seeing a lot more of you in the future, I believe. Um, yeah. yeah. Cheers. Just thanks. might be the next master. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Those bloody rats. Give me a layer. Yes. All right, man. Thanks for that. That's good. All right. right. We are, That's ladies good. and gentlemen, catch us later. Like and subscribe to the bloody channel or Brinley will cry. And nobody wants to see Brinley cry. Oh, don't stretch and try to flex your muscles, your punts. All right. <laughs> I'm not smart, but I can lift things. I lift things. I lift heavy things. All right. Catch us, boys, later. Love it.